So I've been working on the Solartron and I finally got around to actually working on the thing. It's been a while. I've had it sitting there for I don't know, a couple of months probably. And I'm recapping the power supply right now. I've already done most of it. And I've found there's a clock, I don't know, 200 millivolts ripple on some of these rails, that sort of stuff. So, And these are old Phillips caps. And this thing's like 40 years old. I do know these Phillips caps do fail after that kind of period of time. As evidence in the Datrons. And I'm wearing a appropriate shirt. It's always a capacitor. Yeah, anyway. So, <laughs> I'm replacing capacitors. I'll sort of show you a little technique I'm using on this thing, so you actually know a little trick which might help you. Now, as you can see here, I've got a heat sink on the back here. It's having me in place. You can't actually get to the, the uh, traces on the back there. But you can actually do this another way without making it too hard for yourself. So basically what you do is you just solder the top side there. You put some fresh solder on. I've already done these ones. Apart from that one, I haven't done that one yet. I will be doing that one. So I'll probably show you that technique on this one. But basically you should put some extra fresh solder on it and you just lift the leg out. And then do the same for the other side, take the part out, and then use your wick or desoldering gun, whatever you've got. I use a desoldering gun, and suck the solder out, and then you just get that as a that component you've taken out as a template, the bent legs, and you can use those to form the legs of the new one, including cutting them to the correct length. And then you just drop the new one in, which is what I've done these. They're just sitting there right now. Right? So these are sitting in there, and then you just solder them back in again from the top. That way, down to dismantle the whole bottom of the board. So that can save you a lot of time sometimes. I've had this many times where it's been a real mission to get to the bottom of the board to get the parts out because they weren't really designed for you to work on it. This technique works really well. So I'm going to solder these parts back in again. And then we'll take this one out. And that's this section done. I've got a couple more over the other side over here, which I might have to look at. Well, I know one of them I have to look at. The ripples are behind it. So let's solder these in. Fortunately, my extractor's down at the bottom of the best desk there, so I can't actually get any extraction here. So, lots of fumes. So that's those ones on. Do the other end. Seems to be harder to get to. I'm using silver solder for this. I always use my decent solder on this kind of equipment. Probably doesn't matter too much for power supply, but I still like to use it. Basically, it's piece test gear. Then I'm using my decent solder on it pretty much all the time. That's the way I do it. So now let's get this one out, which I know needs replacing as well. And let's try and do so, get my hand in the way as well if we can. So put a bit of fresh solder on here just to get it to wick properly and get it all nice and get it flowing. Same on the other end. Watch out for the fumes. If you can, you use extraction and do it. I've got an open window here and stuff like that, so that's going to help. Right, so it's going to flow nicely now. So we'll go over here, lift this end off. Like that. Lift this end off. This one's a bit harder because it's a ground plane. There we go, that's that part out. This is marked with dots to show which sides are positive. Now I'm going to get my desoldering gun. I'll zoom out a bit for this. Right, this is going to be noisy, I'm afraid. Not with solder. Suck that out. There we go. Now we get the new part. Form the legs up to be the same as the old one. And we can drop that in. It's pretty easy. And I always make sure I try and always try and do it anyway. So the markings can be read with the thing in place. So you can whoever comes across it next time can see what it is. It just makes it easier for everyone really. Form this lead up like that. Trim it off at about the right length. I tend to go slightly longer than the original because usually the originals don't stick out that much. As long as it doesn't touch anything on the other side, it's okay. Don't get too close to anything critical. Bend this leg about there. Trim it down. Should be about there. Now should I drop this in? So positive goes the other way. In place. Now so nice my soldering on or well, my desoldering gun start doing is spitting up backwards. So I'm getting these solder blobs coming out the back. So watch out for that. For some reason it's blowing before it sucks. It's a bit strange. So I need to get the one out from inside here as well. Don't need blobs sitting around. There we go. That's it. Okay. So anyway, that part's in there. Let's solder that back in. So this is a, as you may notice, it's a Jackon cap, which actually came from RS Components. Um, 
normally I try and get Nichicon or Nippon Chemicon or something like that, you know. Um, you know, high quality brands. Rubicon, you know, all those kinds of deals. But sometimes you can't get them in the style you need. So it's still 105 degree rated cap, but it's, this is from RS, it's like one of the ice brand ones I think. But uh, yeah, it's it's hopefully okay, I guess we'll find out. But uh, anyway, that's all in. So that's that section recapped. Now I've got one more to do. So what I quite like about the Solotron is all you have to do is take out two screws here and this whole assembly just sort of half slides out. You've still got attachments at this end, but over here is like a ribbon which plugs in, which actually does the power supplies to the main board over here, um, the board below it. So you can just unplug that and slide the thing out a little bit, which is quite nice. So I've got to do the same deal on this one. There's a 1 microfarad 350 volt right here and a 220 microfarad 10 volt which is the same as the one just replaced over here. So I'm going to replace that one because I know that one's got quite high ripple on it. I'm going to change that one as well. Uh, the one microfarad 350 volt, I'm not sure I've got anything suitable for that. I'll have to have a look. Actually, I haven't looked for that one yet. Right, let's get some solder on here. Then we shall try and lift it out. Also the ground plane side is always the hardest side to do because it's got a big thick copper trace on the other side of the ball. And right now it's sucking all the heat. I've got quite a fine bit on here so I can get in quite easily. Here we go. I'm take this one out here. Like that. Right, let's form another one up. Now I'm going to use the first one I took out because they're all, the leg spaces and these are identical across all the capacitors. So the one I took out before, I'm going to use as a template for the second one because I bent the leg up. Form it so I can read the values. Like that, and we'll bend the leg around about there and about here. I know it's out of focus, but I can't bother changing the camera right now. Yeah, it's almost in focus. <laughs> right now, let's clear these holes out. underneath the splatter. No, no splatter this time, that's good. And just drop the part in the right around. Check the lead length, make sure they're not sticking out too much. Yeah they are a little bit. Let's just shorten those slightly more. Right, that's looking good now. Solder that in. Then the heat let it flow through. Barely. Do a bit more. I think I actually might need to put some more heat on these other ones I've done as well, just to try and get it to flow through more to the ground plane. The ground plane is not looking very good in the other ones, on the other side of the ball. Don't like to rely on the, the through holes to actually get the power through. Right. This is a ground plane, it's a bright, you know, ground planes can be a bit of a problem. So let's just do these other ones again, and I'll come back afterwards. I've cleaned up the flux and stuff around the whole area, all the parts have already replaced. This capacitor here I can't replace, I don't have one of suitable value, I've only got a 63 volt, which based on the fact this is a 350 volt makes me wonder if I do need to have a high voltage here. Because it is a switch mode power supply so it probably does need quite a high value. So I'm going to leave that alone and I think I'll put it back together and retest it. I've got my multimeter hooked up, my brand new multimeter, this is the uh, Bryman BM869S. Saw one featured recently, I thought oh, I'll get one. Actually, I've still got the screen protector on this, peel this off, eh? Yeah, I'll... Actually, I'll get a close up. He likes a close up appealing. Here you go. <sighs> Never the same again. So, the reason I got this multimeter is because it does AC and DC measurements at the same time in a dual display. It's a little bit slow, but it can, it can do it. It's actually, in a way, it's quite nice. You can also just do it manually, you can just do DC measurements and then do AC measurements afterwards, you know, in order to get ripple measurements. Of course you can also use a scope instead, it's up to you. Different ways of doing it. Anyway, let's power this up, see if it goes bang. Right, let's get onto here and see about measuring voltages and stuff. Let's measure here. That's about a 20 volt supply. 20 volts. Not onto it very well though. 
try there. There we go. Two by five. And you see that it will settle down this ripple measurement here as it's sampling. So there's nothing too horrendous there. It's disappearing. Next one. This is a 30 volt supply. So again, same deal, it's looking alright. This is a minus 30 volt supply. All looking very equal, aren't they? It's good. A little bit half a volt down though. Not sure if that really matters much. I think it's plus or minus one volt is it is an allowed tolerance. So this is a 21 volt or minus 21 volt supply. It's alright. What I do wish it did do on here though is actually have a ranging on the on the AC as well because it uses the same range or whatever the scale is. I wish it was like allowed ranging to say millivolts stuff like that because that could actually be quite good. Anyway, can't be everything. So there's 20 volt supply there. Or oh, 21 is it? No 20. So that's sitting slightly high that barrel actually. But the ripple's looking alright. I'll go through and show you on the AC as well. Isn't it? And this is a 5 volt rail, 191. They does have a couple of adjustments over here, but I don't actually know what they do. There's also one more adjustment over here. And we've got another rail over here. Yeah, 21 volt rail. And the ripple's getting better and better. That's looking good. So before I was going to actually measuring things like 200 millivolts ripple AC on some of these rails. So let's just do an AC measurement and just verify that it's looking okay because obviously the scaling is right at the bottom end there. Let's just do a skin to AC measurement. So this is about 14 millivolts. It's getting better. Huh? About 14 millivolts ripple there. That's the minus 20 volt rail. This is the plus 30 volt rail. About 28 millivolts, minus 30 volt rail, about 34. This is the minus 20. So, this rail before had about 200 millivolts ripple on it, so that's definitely a lot better straight away. And so did this one, this is also really high ripple. Yeah, it's looking fine there, look at that. 7 millivolts. You've got a 5 volt rail here. Yes, really low. That's all looking fine. Oh, I missed one. This one here. It's like 30, 30 odd millivolts on that one. Cool. Now you have got this rail over here, so I need to be careful about how I clip onto because I think it's high voltage. <laughs> well, one of them is anyway. It was only a 10 volt system. Let's see if I can get in here. And there, there you go, it's right down as well now. And if I go back to this range, so it's a 5.5 volt rail. Cool. Right, that's all looking good. So this 350 volt cap, which is here, is 175 volts DC across there. So, but it's got 230, was it? Yeah, 2.2 volts ripple across it. That's a bit concerning. Let's go to this one. And sure enough, 2.2 volts ripple. So I might need to replace that cap. That's looking pretty bad. Alright, so I've been playing with the calibration on this thing, obviously, and trying to get it nice. And I think I've basically done it. I haven't really finished it though. Part of the requirements is you're supposed to have a dummy plug in the back there or something with which forces it into the 10 volt range so you can do the 10 volt zeroing. Now, I don't have that system set up. I think I put based on information in the service manual, I think I could probably make one. But I'm bothered. So all I've actually done is I've made sure it's in the 10 volt range and try to set the lower lowest reading I can do in that range as accurately as I can and then the 10 volt range, the, the 10 volt maximum, then back down to you know what's it 1.4 volts is the minimum I could do on it. And then just doing that repeatedly until I've got a nice even range. Anyway so since I've got the PDVS2 mini set up here at zero volts 
the one volt. They get one volt. If you want more accuracy and resolution stuff, we can you know stick a bit of time on there. One volt, two volts, which is where it changes ranges. So you flick up busy when it changes ranges. So two volts, and I'm got to ten volts. Keep it a certain time, but it will get there. There we go, ten volts. All right, um, and if I do the ten seconds integration time to give it the highest accuracy, it takes obviously ten seconds. This should give me the reading that this actually puts out. Now this is calibrated to, I think it is six microvolts offset. I believe the calibration, yeah, six point, so it's ten volts with six microvolts positive error, and we're getting seven on there. So I've calibrated this to match what this actual calibration actually is, based on what Ian Johnson said it to when he built it, and that's what we're getting. So nice, you got seven and a half digits. So anyway, it's working anyway. So it seems to be good. It doesn't seem to have any faults now. I've you know, recapped it and obviously did all that stuff. That's all looking good. I'm pretty happy with it, really. It seems to be all right. Whether or not I keep it, though, is a question. I mean, this cable alone, just this cable is 200 bucks. It makes it a bit hard to get your money back if you try and resell something. But then it's a Solotron. It might be able to sell it for decent money. I don't know. Um, if you're in New Zealand and you want a Solotron, let me know. How's that? <laughs> I might sell it for the right price. It's the only seven and a half digit meter I've got though, but it's only does seven and a half digits in certain spots, only certain ranges. You know, you have to be in this range for a start. You know, ten seconds, and only has to be a certain voltage range. If I try and do, say, one volt, then it won't be seven and a half digits. It'll only be six and a half digits at one volt. Once it gets there, but it's still a seven and a half digit scale. It's a scale which is seven and a half digits, but the reading is only six and a half because you've got a leading one here, which is potentially there. Yeah, so there you go, one volt, six and a half digits. Yeah, anyway, it's working. It's doing what it's supposed to do. I've played the AC. The AC had a bit of trouble trying to get this calibrated. I've got two other multimeters I was using the calibration. One has been calibrated to a new standard, apparently. And I've got my Datron. My Datron seems much more consistent across frequencies versus the HP, interestingly. And this was sort of in between the two. So trying to get like an average kind of error uh, between the meters to try and get this one calibrated for AC is interesting. But basically it's there, it does read, but it looks like my AC calibrate is also giving me some trouble above, I don't know, about 500 volts AC. It's starting to be a bit glitchy. I'm have to have a look at that and pull it apart and give it a bloody refurb again. I don't know. Anyway, it works. Happy with that. It's okay. It says so right there. Get you later.